Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany from She Run the World Travel Blog, and I'm a digital nomad who travels the world full time while working remotely. And today I'm going to talk about one of the things I am so, so passionate about planning your travels or more specifically, how to use Google Maps to plan your travels. Anyone who knows me or has watched any of my itinerary videos or planning videos before knows I'm a crazy Google map maker and I'm such a visual person that I legit need to see the layout of a city to understand it better and actually feel prepared before I go on my trip. So if you're like me or even if you're not and you just want help on how to plan your travels more efficiently, you're in the right place. So in this video, I'm gonna be building out a map from scratch here so that way you can follow along while I do it. So the first step is your research part, right? So you have to do research, you have to compile a list of all the top things that you wanna see in a certain place. How I usually do this is by watching vlogs and reading blogs, and I think it's really important to note here that you do need to know what kind of traveler you are so you know what you should be researching and who you should be getting your research information from. You know, for example, I'm a total budget traveler. I love authentic local experiences. And yes, of course, I'm gonna see the main tour sites when I go somewhere but that's not really my main focus and I don't really like shopping or bougie restaurants so I have to know which blogs and vlogs to get my information from that actually matches my travel style. I'm actually making a whole separate video on this like how to find that information, how to figure out what your travel style is, destinations that fit your style best so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Once you have your list of sites to see we'll start building out our map. So now I'm gonna focus my attention on actually building out this map. So yes, I will not be looking at the camera entirely. I'll try to turn a little bit, but I'm just gonna be sharing my screen with you guys and have myself in a tiny box so you can still see me, but all right, we're good to go. So what you're gonna be seeing on the screen right now is on the left-hand side, you see my list. So this is what I was just talking about. You do have to compile your list of just, you know, it doesn't have to be that comprehensive, but just random ideas, random things you've seen on Instagram, blogs, whatever it is. Just make a super simple list and then pull up Google Maps. So obviously, here's my Google Maps. So the first thing you want to do here is once you're in Google Maps, you're going to click Saved. Then you're going to click Maps. Here you can see all of my psycho maps because I'm crazy. Um, and then you're going to go all the way down the bottom and click Create Map. So now this is going to open up a new window. This is separate for the map that you're creating. So obviously it's going to bring me to the U.S. because that's where I'm at right now. But wherever you're going to be traveling to, once you type in that first thing on your list, so for me, I'm doing a Quito map today, it's automatically going to bring us to Quito. So let's go ahead and change the title of this, Quito Three Days. You can add a description if you want to, but I'm not going to for the purpose of this. Then you're just going to, you can either copy and paste or you can just start typing in Basilica de Voto Nacional. Click on it. It's going to bring you to where it actually is and you'll click to add it to the map. So you're going to continue to do this for all of the things on your list. Um, obviously, once you put it on the map, you get a little pin here and then you actually start to see that your list will form here. So let's put a few more in. Mercado Central, right down the road, add it to the map. Independence Square. And the good thing is because it's like Google is smart enough to know, hey, we're dealing with, you know, the downtown of Central Quito right now. Obviously, there's probably a million central markets, a million independent squares. But since our first pin that we dropped was right in the downtown of Quito, it's going to keep us there, you know, for all the things that we're typing in. So you don't have to be too, too specific. All right. So now we have all of our pins here. You can see them all here. They're matching the list that I originally had just with pins, like I said. So once we zoom out all the way keep going because I have a few pins up here so now we can see you know all the different pins and how spread out they are one thing that you can do that's super helpful like depending on how much research you've done if you just know like oh I remember seeing that on Instagram or whatever and you're not really gonna remember the name it is cool because you can click on a specific pin and you can click this edit button from here you can type in notes like cheap food market under three dollars something like that or if there is like if you're going to a certain place that has an entrance fee i always usually do that as i'll type in the entrance fee right there um just so i can remind myself but you can also add photos so you can upload images that you have saved you can do it from google anything and so if you have that cool instagram photo that you know like oh as soon as i see that instagram photo it's, i'm going to be reminded what this place is you can screenshot that and add that to your map so that way when you're looking at this and you're like wait what's that i don't know what that name is 
You can click on it automatically, the description and the photo will pop up. So that's super, super helpful for places maybe you're not super familiar with. So you know, now our map is finished and we can start to naturally see what items are kind of near each other and what items are kind of far away. So depending on how many days you're gonna be there, you're gonna pick how many colors for how many days you're gonna be there. So for this one, like I said, we're gonna do three days. That's the title of our map. So I'm gonna pick three different colors. I'm just gonna pick Ecuador's colors because why not? red, yellow, blue, and then we can start to color coordinate them based on their location. So that way we can kind of start to separate, you know, day one, day two, and day three by the different colors. There's no particular order, but obviously since these two are really far away, I'm gonna go ahead and do these ones yellow. And then I'm gonna separate these ones out based on how far apart they are from each other to do the red and the blue. So we'll do, we'll keep this section in the middle blue. And then I'll go ahead and do this red right here, nice dark red. Go ahead and do that on your map. I'm gonna do that really quick. And when you're finished, it should look something like this. So we have a very aesthetic map here, very visually pleasing. We can easily see just by looking at this without zooming in or anything, we have three distinct days, right, based on color. And that's my visual brain working right there. I'm like, yes, I love to see those colors. So my brain automatically knows, okay, day one, day two, day three. That's awesome. So the best part of this too is once you're actually finished with your map, you have it color coordinated, you have all the comments in there, you have photos if that's what you wanna do. Now you can actually share this map with the people that you're actually traveling with. So you just go up here and click the share button. Anyone with this link can view. If you want other people to be able to find your map, you wanna share your hard work with other people, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and then if you want them to see your name and photo, but obviously if they're people that you're traveling with, you probably don't care about that. And then you can click the copy button send it to them via text or email, whatever it may be. And voila, now you've created your map, you have all your notes, you have your photos, you've shared it with the people that you're traveling with so they can look at, you know, what are we doing on this trip? Um, that's usually how it is for me and my boyfriend. I plan out everything and then we get there and he's like, so what are we doing? Right, where are we going? I feel like there's always those types of people in the groups that you're traveling with. So now you can actually share this with them and kind of fill them in beforehand. So once the map is done, once you've shared it with other people, you do want to make sure that you have Google Maps downloaded on your phone so you can easily access all the maps that you've created by clicking Saved Maps. Now you can view, you know, the whole map, the legend, if you have any photos and notes attached exactly like how I was describing on the computer, you can see this on your phone. And that's obviously what you're going to be using. Once you oh. at front door. Alexa. Alexa, stop. All right, back to filming. <laughs> so obviously your phone is what you're gonna be using when you're traveling, right? You're not gonna walk around with your laptop. You might not even bring your laptop if it's a short trip. But so that's the best part of this. You know, when you're actually out traveling, you just wake up, you're like, okay, I'm doing the yellow pin today. You click on the first yellow pin, get directions to go there, easy peasy. The best part about Google Maps over Apple Maps, in my opinion, is that it's a lot more accurate and has nearly all countries' public transportation options and timetables on it. So that's super, super helpful when you're traveling abroad, relying on public transportation to actually get around and do all of these things that you put on your map. So there you have it. This is how I personally plan out all of my trips and you can plan all your trips this way too. Let me know in the comments if you've built out a Google Map before to plan your travels or if you literally never knew that you could do this. I'd love to see where everyone's at. Make sure to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe so you don't miss out on digital nomad and travel tips as I continue my digital nomad journey around the world. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.